Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. We're here at PAX East 2015, and we're going to talk about comics. <laughs> it's a very special episode It is, of a very special Issues. episode of On Back location. Issues. On location. On location at Boston, PAX. Massachusetts. That's right. We're here with one of the first, the only you PAX. You Western Massachusetts? Boston, Massachusetts. Who gives a crap about video games? This is a comic book channel. <laughs> yeah. This That's why we're at a video game show. <laughs> Today we're talking about Earth X. Now, this is uh, Marvel's Kingdom Come, I've heard you describe it as. Yes. Uh, this was, first, I should say, this was given to us in an episode of The Letters Page. Yep, that's right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Didn't look up your name beforehand. I'm sorry <laughs> for that. that out. You know, we thanked you in The Letters Page. Yeah. You got no, a whole episode you of well, Letters Page. How greedy are you that you need to be thanked again? Jesus. Again? Your book is in the episode. Jesus, But man. still, thank you. But no, thank you very but much. But seriously, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's drawn uh, not by Alex Ross but all the designs are done by Alex Ross what does that mean Aww. it means that Alex Ross designed everything that you see in this book it means you see the cover he, that's the, done by Alex the Ross the art doesn't right. look like the cover it doesn't look like that at all okay uh, no it's actually uh, written by Jim Kruger okay. and it's uh, drawn by John Paul Leon okay uh, yeah yeah those are names I've never heard before nope and I never will say them again okay um, in fact, so uh, yeah, I mean, well, I, I've never written, I've never read anything by either of them, okay. ever. Well, how'd they end up on this book? I don't know, but I'll tell you <laughs> how this book. Else was busy. I'll tell you how this book came to be. Um, Wizard Magazine was like so high on Kingdom Come, like we all loved Kingdom Come. We read it. We're like, yeah. holy shit, this book is amazing. Well, when it came out, well, you guys. Well, that's true. Yeah, but when you were finished. You know, when I first hearing you talk about it. Yeah, it was amazing. It was impressive. Um, when it was coming out, they all agreed it was amazing then as well. Right. So when Kingdom Come was coming out, they were so already convinced it was going to be an instant classic. Like mm-hmm. They flipped out how awesome it was. Um, Wizard was like, wow, what if Marvel could do their own Kingdom Come? Like, wouldn't that... If, if DC's Kingdom Come was awesome... Wouldn't Marvel's Kingdom Come be even awesomer? And Marvel's saying this, being like, DC's a joke. Oh, Marvel they didn't even have anything to do time. with it. Didn't, DC, Marvel had nothing to do with it at all. It was just Wizard Magazine. And so they called Alex Ross, and they were like, could you, like, draw what your version of Marvel's Kingdom Come would be like? And Ross was like, okay, which blows my mind that he would do that. <laughs> so there's like this... Not as a paycheck, just as an idea. Like, I'm sure Wizard they, reached out to him, just like, could you draw that? And he's I'm, like, yeah. I'm sure they paid him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because it was a whole, like, multi-page I mean, for him, it's spread. just a commission. It's true. And he didn't color them or anything. Like, it was just, it was just pencils. Brilliant and gorgeous-looking pencils. Right. And they're all here that you can see on the cover. Okay. They are uh, impressive. And, yeah. they, and they have little blurbs where they explain what happens, like, like, why they're designed like this. Like, why Captain America is draped in the American flag and has, like, an A carved in his head. And, uh... Who's Raspberry Man? That's Spider's Man. Why is Spider's Man in this book? Who is Spider's Man? I don't Man? know. Nobody. Okay. So there's all these different ideas here, and I think the idea was they were like, okay, Kingdom Come is about the next generation of superheroes. Okay. And how it's fucking up everything. Right. Earth X is more like, what if everyone on the planet was superheroes? Okay. Like, what if everyone on the planet had superpowers? That's a very different concept. Totally different concept, <laughs> but for some reason, Wizard thought it was the exact same concept. Or... A natural sidestep. Like, well, they can't just do the same thing. Except that you are doing the same thing. Question about that. Now, does that mean like everyone has superpowers? Like, like normal people have superpowers. Like we would have superpowers. Or like we literally like the human race. The human race has been no. The human race has been switched. Like everyone who was a person is now super. We all have the X gene. It turned on. Yes. (laughs) Oh, I want that. You. Some of them you don't. Uh, (laughs) And I'll tell you why. Like Spider's Man. Like Spider's Man. Well, he's dumb. I don't want to be Raspberry Man. He sucks. Man. Uh, well, that might, you, might get, you might be Raspberry Man. That's the problem. That's the thing. You don't get to pick. Yeah. And when you get deeper into it, like you'll see why and it all makes sense. But okay. uh, So Wizard was like, this is... And it, that issue sold like gangbusters because everyone's like, wow, Marvel's Kingdom Come, that's going to be amazing. And then Marvel was like, okay, just do this. <laughs> Apparently people, people want to see that. People, because Wizard kept making sales that are on the backs of a Marvel idea. Right, and they're like, right. okay. And an idea that hasn't gone through. And they're like, clearly this is something people want. Here you go. So naturally, Alex Ross didn't draw it, and instead, uh, you know, they gave See, it to... He just inspired it. Mind. He did, he inspired it. Like, they said, hey, would you be able to draw this? He said, sure. He drew the... He was like, oh, and, and I'll, I'll Wizard design. said it. 
And yeah. Marvel's like, that's great. Let's not get Alex well, Ross. Well, he just drew some sketches. I have a feeling they... He might have had a job that he was working on or something. I think they asked Alex Ross, and Alex Ross was like, I'm not drawing all that. Yeah. You did it twice! It's not... Kingdom Come isn't nearly as long or as dense as this. Right. No, but Kingdom Come and Justice are more than that. Both more, of them combined? Oh, more cost-wise? I mean, like, the amount of work oh, that went you put into them those. Together. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, the, the art, I shouldn't, I shouldn't art. shirk the art. Because the art is difficult to see. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of heavy inks. Yeah, there's which a lot are, of black. Which are all yeah. done by Bill Reinhold, but like... Judge oh. Reinhold. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of blacks. There's yeah. a lot of darkness. Because the book itself is incredibly dark. Well, it, we make a lot of use of negative space here. Yeah. This almost seems like a book that wasn't supposed to be colored. Like, that's how much black there is in it. Yes. But if, you, if it wasn't... You wouldn't be able to see anything that happens in the book. Uh, and so, it's interesting because for me, this is like, yeah, this is kind of a natural progression for Kingdom Come. Like, this is Marvel's version. Because in DC, it's more like the next generation of superpowers. How are people going to reconcile living in a world with superheroes? And as you've pointed out before, like, the Marvel Universe is supposed to be like a real world version of with, like, so with superheroes like you know there's New York and this the Chrysler building and like Stanford right. Connecticut right. instead of DC having like, like Metropolis cities. and right. Gotham and like and Central how City how old is anybody but uh, the, the, don't ask the, that question with Spider-Man okay no but the problem is yeah exactly because he's supposed to be whatever age but for whatever reason uh, you know with mutants being naturally born like eventually there will be no more people like, eventually, yeah, if Reed right. Richards existed in the real world, like, cancer wouldn't exist. Right, right. Uh, so, you know, it's if we had alien invaders... It's conclusion of... It makes a logical jump. Yeah. Except that it's not a natural change. See, so right. what happens well, is... Well, they had to make it happen in the time frame where all the heroes would still be alive. Right, but they are still old. They are old now. Okay. Um, and th the next generation sucks. <laughs> but there's only, like, two members of the next generation, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so... I don't even know where to start with this except to say, like, okay, there was this guy that was created in, like, the Jack Kirby era called Machine Man. Okay. And he was, like, a kind of like an Avenger. He was a member of Next Wave, but it's not... It's kind of iffy as to whether that was in continuity or not. But Machine Man was just, like, an artificially intelligent guy. Like, an artificially intelligent robot. Okay. That, um... Donned the skin, but not, like, like you know, artificial skin, of a person and, like, walked around as a guy. Okay. Okay. So he like the Terminator. Yeah, like the Terminator. Yeah, but he's but like he was programmed with like a consciousness and a, like a sense of identity. So like he's not really pretending to be a person as much as like you know maybe, like he's as much a human as like Data is. So he's okay. not. So he's an android. He's an android. Okay. Yeah. And uh, his name's Aaron Stack. He took like his dad's like last name and you know whatever. But um, in this book, he's called X fifty one, which is actually like the last three numerical letter like uh, places in his like long ass robot name okay the reason why he's called X-51 is because the watcher Uatu uh, has been blinded and he can't see what's going his on his eyes taken out I'm oh, assuming well, they, they were pushed gouged in gouged out in original sin he got shot in the head yeah. and then they were extracted they from were, his well, they, I would say they were scooped out of his head being gouged yeah they were gouged because they, because they were used as like baseballs well I would think gouging out someone's eyes means they're still alive when that happens that's true oh. You can gouge out a skull's eyes, a dead body's eyes. Oh, yeah, naturally. No, yeah. I think that a would be scooping. Eyes. Well, yeah. well, he's alive in the house. Gouging and scooping are the same thing. Anyway, anyway. They, 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 he's blinded, and so he needs a new watcher to, to see what's going on and tell him what's happening. His ears, like, are connected, so he knows, not okay. to, to his body, like, connected to the network. Okay. That the oh, watcher has okay. on the moon. And the watcher uh, is preparing for some next level shit, because he's like... The human race is ending, so I need to be prepared. But I've been blinded, right. so I need a new watcher to tell me what he sees. Okay. So he calls upon X-51 and teleports Wait. him to the moon. I need a new watcher to tell me what he sees. Yes. So I'm still not seeing it, right. and I'm not being replaced. No. I well, need someone else to come in and be my eyes, yes. but I'll still be the conscience behind it. Well, he's not even a conscience. He's actually kind of a dick and a nihilist. Like, I'm sorry, well, not conscience. Consciousness. consciousness. Oh, yes. That's what I meant yes, to say. absolutely. Uh, and Why wouldn't they just replace him? Well, because... Well, you're blind. You're kicked oh, out. Oh, no. Well, actually, there's a whole reason why, and we'll get into well, that. I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, that's a good question. Yeah, excellent question. I'm glad you asked. Um, the Watcher is... First of all, the Watcher plans some great... Yeah, look through this thing and then just ask questions as it goes, because, like, I'll try to, to carry it through, but the point here is the Watcher is preparing for the end of the world. 
Okay. And he needs X-51 because X-51 is a robot. And he keeps calling him X-51, which really pisses off Aaron Stack, the machine man. Okay. He's like, hey, like, I'm a, I'm a guy. And he's like, you're not a guy, you're a robot. Right. And robots have no souls, and that's why you're perfect for this job. It's like if a tree wanted to be called a rock. Well, it's like if a, if a, if a, if a, if a robot wanted to be called a human. Right. I'm just... Like, you can't do like, that. You like, are clearly not a rock. Well, that's you true. You are a tree. Yes. Um, except he can be called human, because he has a consciousness. But anyway, uh, so the Watcher is, is preparing... X-51 for, like, this this coming apocalypse. The apocalypse kind of already come because, like, the world is this really dystopian Blade Runner-esque world <laughs> and everyone's miserable, but also everybody has superpowers. And a consequence of, like, everyone becoming superpowered... By the way, the people who didn't become superpowers naturally. They got superpowers because for one reason, but everyone thinks it's a different reason. Like, Reed Richards uses vibranium to create a worldwide system of, like, regen renewable energy. So he's going to, like, solve the energy crisis by using vibranium technology that he invents all across okay. the world. Somebody accidentally falls into one of these, react these vibranium reactor chambers, and it causes a chain reaction which fucks up the vibranium energy... Like, resonance something thingies, And he assumes that that fucks up the world and makes everyone into mutants. Okay. Uh... And clearly you mean in humans. Well, <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, they are in humans. Everyone what? assumes they're mutants. Oh. But in fact, uh, Blackagar Boltagon uh, and his inhuman royal family right. were really upset because, like, inhumans, of course, have been always isolated and separated from the world, from okay. the outside world. Right. Um, and they keep, like, bouncing around. Like, sometimes they live on the moon or they live, say, on, did they live on the moon. They did live on the moon. With the Watcher? Yes. Well, like near neighbors? the Watcher. Yeah. yeah. They were neighbors. Exactly. And, uh... Did Bla the Watcher ever call the cops on them being like, they're throwing crazy parties? Uh... <laughs> there is a conflict between the Inhumans and the Watcher, but I'll oh. get to that. Um, Man, so just on the ball today. I know, right? It's almost like this book's incredibly predictable. So, <laughs> the, the Watcher... I have no idea what I'm talking about. No. So, the Inhumans, um... The Inhuman royal family, that is to say, uh, are like, what are we going to do for these Inhumans, these, this member of our population who wants to leave? They're going to be outcasts, they're going to be persecuted, they're going to be treated like, like those X-Men. Like second-class citizens. Right. Yeah. So, Black Bolt uses his brother Maximus the Mad's Terrigian bomb and sets it off and makes everyone into Inhumans. The whole world into Inhumans. So okay. that way nobody will be persecuted. Wait. Uh, wait. I really thought that you could only become an Inhuman if by you being were, exposed to the Eterigy Mists yeah. if you actually were supposed to be an Inhuman. Well, in this, no. Well, but this is a Terigian bomb. Yes. Right? And the not bomb. the Terigian Mists. And no, also... But the Terigian bomb, I imagine, has a lot of mist in it. Right. Well, it, but it's also got a special catalyst that yes. like, activates the Inhuman. I don't know, The catalyst man. actually went in all of us. You see, every human on planet Earth has this little special something within them that was put here by Celestials. So they're just saying that, well, no, That's, anybody could become an Inhuman if they were well, supposed to. Well, you see the thing about... Even though yes. the Inhumans, like, certain people when they're exposed to it, don't become... Well, they die. Yeah. <laughs> or they blow up. Yeah. But and they're then just die. saying, no, no, Yeah, no. no. Well, that happened. That actually happened later, so, we like... getting kinks out of the system. Yeah. Uh, so everyone's So everyone has become... But Reed Richards, by the way, blames himself. He doesn't, like, the, the, like, the Inhumans ever told Richards that happened. Okay. So Richards like, damn it. I thought Reed was on... Uh, part of the uh, he's friends with the, the Inhumans things. oh yeah the, the the Illuminati Illuminati didn't exist before when they invented this book oh, shit. yeah that was retconned in what's going on with Daredevil here is this really Daredevil uh, that's like Mephisto that's the Daredevil and he can't die and we don't know who he actually is oh okay he's like he, this Daredevil is a circus performer yeah who does like death defying stunts yeah, he doesn't I, defy it he actually just tries to kill himself yeah I saw he's, him land on a blade yeah. and he just gets up and he's always looking for like the next big thrill which is why he actually gets called into Captain America's mini war against the Red Skull Oh. See, back in the day, uh, the Red Skull, the actual Red Skull, uh, Schmidt, was killed by Captain America. Captain America's like, all right, enough, and he kills the Red Skull. Okay. But then he's like, I'm not worthy to be Captain America anymore because I murdered somebody. This is back before Captain America was, like, established as being a guy who kills people. Okay. Um, and even then, like, he killed people like, in war. You know, it wasn't like he just goes around murdering people. Right. No, so... Uh, the Daredevil getting impaled on a giant sword. When the Terrigian bomb goes off... Uh, a lot of things change, mm -hmm. not just like all of humanity's physiology. In fact, uh, Comet Man, who's a crappy character we're not going to talk about, he has a son, and his son 
becomes a psychic, the world's biggest psychic, okay. and his psychic awakening from the Terigium bomb kills all the other psychics. Oh. So Professor X is dead, Jean's dead, such and such. Jean's actually in the book, mm-hmm. and she inexplicably is married to Wolverine, and they both got fat and they live in trailers. What? Yeah. That's but weird. Spoiler warning for that, and if you don't want to... We're spoiling the whole damn thing, yeah, but like, we at the end, she decides to leave Wolverine, and she reveals that she was never Jean Grey. She was actually Madeline Pryor. Madeline Pryor was a, a clone of Jean Grey that became the Phoenix and stuff. Oh, I really thought it was going to be, she's not Jean Grey, she's a body double. Right, she's a life model decoy. Exactly. No, right. she's a well, she's kind of a clone or something. But anyway, I thought you were gonna say she leaves Wolverine and goes back to Cyclops. No, she never goes back to Cyclops. Cyclops is alone, and it's funny because he's like his involvement in what's going on. Because the red, because the, the new Red Skull, the kid, the okay. psychic kid, he just puts on a Punisher shirt with like a red skull on it. He just thinks it's cool. Oh, I was trying, wow, Medusa trying to figure out who the really Punisher weird. kid was. Well, even the humans have been altered because Alex Ross drew them before they had a story, and so they had to keep all these designs in this story before they actually wrote a story. She's got so, hair coming out of her cheeks like, like saber tooth. Kind of reminds me of the Wolf Boy. Yeah, there's a Wolf Boy in this. He's a member of the X Men. He's, he's actually a member of Daredevil's circus team, but they're actually mutants, and they join with Cyclops, who's going to like help them. Uh, help Captain America overthrow the Red Skull's mental tyranny over everybody. So is the Red Skull the main antagonist? No, well, no. But, like, he's... Okay. Yes. Like, he's the main antagonist on Earth. On Earth, the main antagonist is the Red Skull has, ins- has is enslaving New York, and he's going to take over humanity. He's taking over America, and Captain America, who looks like, you know, this battered centurion or whatever, right. he's miserable and unhappy, and he's like, we got to stop the Red Skull. Again. These appendices are killing me. Yeah, they're... Oh, my God. So there's so much. It's trying so hard to be like Watchmen plus Kingdom Come, and it just winds up being nothing. Yeah. So, uh, Captain America. The, the Captain America plot is like everyone he's friends with has been killed. Like the Avengers all died. Okay. Except for Tony Stark, who's like the Hawkeye's only Hawkeye's dead. And... Hawkeye's dead. And, uh, the only one who actually isn't changed by the Trigian mist was Iron Man because he was in the suit when it happened. Uh, okay. And the Trigian bomb. Yeah, the Trigian bomb. Yes. And President Norman Osborn granted him asylum as long as uh, Iron Man built Iron Avengers to uh, patrol and protect America. Okay. Uh, President Norman Osborn, by the way, looks like a normal dude, but later he is assassinated by the Red Skull, and his mask comes off, and he's actually like a goblin man. Wait, that's doesn't what that happen in another book? Yeah. That happens in... Uh, Siege. Siege, But he, like, right. paints the goblin. He's not actually a goblin. Right. And this is a real goblin. Okay. Tony Stark is, like... Also kind of like in self-imposed exile and he's just kind of like running the Iron Avengers and protecting... Like, he's kind of like the Green Lantern from Kingdom Come of this book. Where I he's can't just believe like, he makes Iron Man suits of the actual Avengers. Yeah. Well, because he's like... Oh. Well, I can't come up with actual ideas, so I'll make an Iron Man well, suit. Because like he misses all his friends. That's right. He's it's miserable. So sad. Yeah, it's and really Iron sad. Man, Quicksilver, and Iron Man. No, that's Man. actually... Well, okay. yes, Iron Man, Quicksilver. But like, that's actually real vision, though. Vision oh, leads okay. the Iron Adventures. He's kind of like if if there's any there's always random misplaced allegories around this thing, and one of them is that like Iron Tony Stark is kind of like Arthur, and Vision's kind of like the Merlin, like he's like a vizier for Iron Man, but okay. for no reason. It's just we're well, who's going to be Lance? I don't know. Nobody. <laughs> so well, that's why it doesn't work. Uh, by the way, Norman Osborn uh, uses. The, he genetically engineers this like thing called the Hydra, which is like an homage to Hydra, the organization. But it's like a big mutant, like Cthulhu monster that's like tormenting everybody. And he actually uh, he uses it to create enough tumult to become president by oh. hiring Tony Stark to build the Iron Avengers to protect people from it. But oh, okay. he also uses the Hydra as like a, a problem that can never really be solved. So it's all there's always an issue that isn't him. Right, you know. Right, that's okay. and actually, Captain America like loses one of his partners to the Hydra because the Hydra, when it te- when it touches you, it like it, it takes you, it makes you a member of the Hydra, which oh. is like kind of like another paralleling of what the Red Skull does when he takes over your mind. Okay, and so the the Captain America plot is Cap is fighting the Red Skull and the, and they're both amassing an army to fight each other. It's kind of okay. like the Stand, where it's like uh, good and evil are amassing their armies. Like the end of the world. The yes, except say, Captain America doesn't shitty. really. Well, they're both <laughs> shitty. Like, uh, Captain America doesn't know the end of the world is coming. Well, I, meant, I meant the stand is shitty. It is, yes. Yeah. The book is pretty cool. Yeah, the, the first half the of the book is cool. Yeah, the end's kind of... Yeah. It falls apart. Just like the first half of the... 
like six hour long show. Oh yeah. And there's a lot of like really cool backstory and in fact every opening chapter for this book is a like a like a flashback that re explains some pillar of the Marvel Universe. So, like, you want to know about Inhumans? That's an opening to the chapter. You want to know who Spider-Man is? Opening to the chapter. Wakanda and Vibranium? Opening to the chapter. Fantastic Four? Boom. Like, everything gets an opening. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's it's just re-explaining everything. If if Kingdom Come is, like, the Bible, Earth-X is the Silm of fucking really. <laughs> because it's so dense. It's so fill Every page. <laughs> so much so that the appendices themselves say, give you crucial backstory that you need in order to understand what the hell is happening. Right. So, the, the, the cap story is that he's amassing an army that's going to fight the Red Skull, and the Red Skull's amassing an army because he's got nothing better to do. <laughs> the Red Skull's like the best written character in this book because he's just a punk douche kid. He's 12, <laughs> and he just has the ability to tell anyone what to do whenever. Now, what does he, like, represent, or like, is he an allegory for something? I'm sure he's kind of like an allegory for just, like, the for like humanity, like the worst that humanity has to offer. Probably. Well, why is he a kid? Like, why is it a kid? Is that it like I don't a statement know. about like young people today, or well, like the no. next generation. Okay. No, because like, well, maybe, but the like, future or... no, because there's never. Well, he, I want this, so he give is, it to me. He is very much like he has no belief in anything, and Captain America believes in uh, his country. He's a nihilist. He's a nihilist. Ugh. So, but the actual plot is that the Celestials. When they created Earth, when they created everything, yeah. when the Celestials created everything, uh-huh. they put a little something in all of humanity. And that little something was turned on when the Terrigium bomb went off. Okay. But that little something is what enables random people, random characters, to have superpowers. So superpowers right. come from... All superpowers? Yeah, like Spider-Man, like he had a little something in him, and it took the spider to catalyze that little something. The mutants, same deal. There's a little something, that, and if you're born a certain way, boom, you're like your little, your little something turns so into a mutant. So the Hulk. There's that little something in you, yeah, and it makes the Hulk into a, ri- a rage monster sort of dying from right. a gamma bomb. Okay, uh, so they're just saying, like, X-Men or mutants and Inhumans are the same thing. Like, literally, they're the same thing. Well, okay. it's, even, it's even more obnoxious because, like, everyone thinks that they're mutants, right? Everyone has turned into mutants. Yeah. Because Professor X is dead, nobody else can, like, tell you. And then the Inhumans come back from the Earth, from the moon. Uh-huh. And they're like, hey, we're going to have a wedding, and it's going to be great. It's, like, really inappropriate and weird, because, like, humanity's fucked, and the humans are like, we're going to have a wedding, erp a derp And, like, what the hell? But they want to call all the Inhumans together to... But since everyone's an Inhuman, they got to find, like, the member of the royal family. So they call up Reed Richards, who, by the way, like, is in self-appointed exile because... Uh, He's blaming himself. Well, he bl- No, not just that. Actually, that probably wouldn't have stopped Reed Richards, except... That during a battle with Namor, the Fantastic Four, who I actually think I, were probably the Fantastic Five at that point, because it was the Thing, Human Torch, Sue, Reed, and Franklin. Reed and Franklin. Sue's Franklin Richards is Reed and Sue's super powered son. Okay. Like, and when I say super powered, he's like he can create universes and shit. Like that's how powerful Franklin what? Richards is. Yes, but Franklin Richards is a member of the Fantastic Four, and uh, Namor is like fucking around with shit. And they, by the way, Namor is like a, a really important central figure in this book. And X-51 keeps asking the Watcher, like, why is Namor keep coming up? <laughs> and he's like, because he was there at the beginning. Like, he was there, not at the beginning of time, but the beginning of, like, the age of superheroes and shit. Okay. Because, like, he was there during, like, the 40s when Captain America was created. And oh, he helped Captain America. And the, the Human Torch, who was Toro, a robot, who was also a member of the Defenders and So shit. many other people were, too. I know, but, like, that was the beginning. Well, yeah, but if, Namor! If he was yeah, one but of Namor. the earliest, Wind like, feet. heroes in the Marvel pantheon. Yeah, he, I, he matters. Is there... Is there a lot of stuff in this book that's like references to like comic history? Yes. Okay. Well, to, to their own history, not to like actual history. Okay. Not like World War II or like the Civil Rights Movement. No, no, but I mean like, you know, Namor is important because he was maybe one of the earliest like characters that was put in one of these books. Oh, so yeah, like... yeah. They probably tied the whole thing around him because of that. Right. But uh, in a fight with Namor, <laughs> uh, Namor winds up actually, uh, oh, no, it was Dr. Doom and Namor team up. Okay. And then Doctor Doom. Is this Doctor Doom here? That's Reed Richards. <laughs> what? Is Where is Doctor Doom's cloak? See, Doctor Doom killed Sue. Oh. And they both blew up. Okay. And Reed and, stole his cloak as payback. Well, and Namor killed the Human Torch. Oh. And shit. since Human Torch was like Franklin's uncle and like favorite person ever, yeah. Frank. Uh, it's the best moment in the whole book. It's Franklin's like, like, you killed my uncle. And for it, you will burn. 
and he just curses because he's power. He can do anything. Right. He curses Namor. So every time Namor leaves the ocean, half his body will be on fire. <laughs> I saw that before, and I was really confused. Yeah. I didn't know it was Namor. Yeah. I thought it was Quicksilver. No. <laughs> Quicksilver's not even in this damn thing. Uh, Is this so Namor? Yeah. So he's just it's just always on fire. He doesn't fire. seem to be in any pain. Because he's uh, he's being mind controlled uh, by the Red Skull. He's probably in immense pain. Or he's deadening the pain in his mind. Right. So, uh, uh, Reed from the complete no- total failure of wait, throwing the world wait, in the chaos with the second. vibranium and shit. I gotta stop you real quick. Okay. Yeah. You killed my uncle, so you're gonna burn. Yeah. But well, he doesn't do shit to the person that killed his mom. He died. Doctor Doom and Reed blew up. Yeah, or Doctor Doom dead. and Sue blew up together. Like they're both dead. So he doesn't There's nothing like, he can do. He doesn't bring him back to life and then kill like, him again. Take over Latveria and be like, no, this country's mine now. No, for the death no, of my mother. Cares. No. Franklin goes away. He's There's gone. no vengeance. No. He can't do anything. Doctor Doom won't know about it. Exactly. So, like, it won't matter. So then uh, Reed goes into exile from, like, for all these reasons. And he's like, where, el- where, where will I go that everyone will leave me alone and I'll, like, get to really, like, stew in it? He goes to Castle Iberia. But because Cas- because Do- Doom's dead and the Doom bots there are retarded, <laughs> uh, he has to dress like Doom in order for the defenses not oh to notice. God. So he dresses as the man who murdered his wife. And uh, it's just bizarre. It's really so that's, weird. But it's just a really cool drawing that Alex Ross made in that Wizard magazine. So now it's in the book, okay? And that's literally how it goes. And there was no context as to why Reed Richards was dressed like Doctor Doom. So they're just like, we no, gotta they, make it work. No, they actually even say like, Doom is responsible for Sue's death, and so Reed became Doom. Right. And they just said that's Reed. And sure. if you say that out loud with no context, it sounds kind of cool. And you yeah. want to know like, more yeah, about well, it. You yeah, assume like there's a reason. Yeah, but, but then, then you get it, and you're out, like, "That's lame. That that's weird." Really sense. So but anyway, children of the ben thing Grimm and, and Alicia Masters, uh, the puppet master's daughter. How did she put out rock babies? That's what you have when you have intercourse with the thing and get pregnant. Well, he means like, how did she survive? The, oh, <laughs> the because the Georgian bomb made her kind of inhuman. Oh. So anyway, uh, when the she inhuman royal family culture. shows up, they're all like, "Hey, we're gonna have a wedding! Yay!" And uh, they call Reed Richards, and they, like, actually get him out of exile. And he's like, you know, like, they're like, help us find the Inhumans. And he's like, you know what actually might work? We could use Cerebro. I just have to reverse the polarity, and we'll find the Inhumans. Like, that's how closely related, right. like, or interchangeable the Inhumans are. Right. And then he uses it. a one with a zero. Yeah. Not? Then he does, and he realizes that everyone on Earth is an Inhuman. And he's oh. like, oh, Black Bolt, you fucking douche. I didn't do this. It wasn't my fault. It was your fault. That's it. I'm coming out of exile. Uh, yeah. God damn it. No, he already came out of exile with that. But yeah, he's like, I'm going to stay out of exile. So, and not uh, going back to Latverian Castle. Yeah. And the idea here is that, okay, I'm going to skip over the, the subterfuge. Okay. The Celestials... Uh, oh, okay. So <laughs> the Watcher convinces X-51 to like go along with his plan of being a Watcher and telling him all this horrible shit that's going on. Okay. And by the way, uh, instilling in him a sense of nihilism and like it doesn't matter futility. Like everything's fucked. It doesn't matter. Okay. Thank God, and, because I imagine X-51 would be like, he keeps What's going, going like, on? Well, he keeps going like, shut up, Watcher. Like they're the heroes that I worked with. Like they're going to be fine. And he's like, no, they're not. Everything's fucked. And they're like, look at them desperately clinging to humanity. And he's like, well, it's, it's stupid. <laughs> Who cares? And uh, wow. Yeah, Watcher's a real dick. And the reason is because... Oh, and then he, he tells X-51, like, the reason is because, like, that little thing inside of everybody, that's what humanity could become. Celestials uh, made... Put that little thing inside of every person because that's the next step in human evolution is that all humans will eventually become the Celestials if they live long enough. Celestials? Yes, they can become oh. universe creators. So if X-51 goes along with it. It's a lie. <laughs> as, as In actuality, Celestials are created... By creating, by placing a celestial egg inside of worlds they create. And then they create life on that world to protect the egg. So superheroes exist to protect the world from being destroyed. Because one day the celestials will come back and they will awaken the egg in the earth, destroying the people that live on it. But there's an elemental force that lives in the universe that keeps the celestials in check. What do you think it is? What would... Galactus. Galactus. Eats planets. Yes. So that they can't hatch the... So that they can't cat hatch the egg. But no matter what, in the fact, happens to that celestial? planet's fucked. No, Galactus is not a celestial. No. But, and in fact, Galactus actually subsists on the energy from the celestial eggs within it's planets. It's not the planet, it's the it's egg. The, it's the egg. He just wants the egg. That's right. He loves that yolky center. It's yeah. Cute. So uh, if the humans can find a way to teleport the egg out of the earth, yes. he won't need to eat the earth. That's right. 
Is that what happens? No. <laughs> because Reed Richards unmade Galactus. Oh. When he thought he was doing a favor back when he was during his, like, I'm going to solve the energy crisis by using all vibranium. So, like, so the only way to solve everything, because S51 figures it out, he's like, oh, shit, like Galactus. I, I got to tell Reed. And then he does, and he's like, Reed's like, oh, that's... Well, I killed Galactus. Are you sure we need Galactus? Yeah, because... That... Are you sure that's the only way? Yeah. And, uh... What if, what if we got other people that were really hungry? Yeah. And wanted and a giant egg? Their... Are these things celestials? Yes. What are these? Okay. Those are celestials. And they're coming. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming for the egg. Right. So, by the way, uh, Black Bolt's the one who blinded the Watcher. Why? So that the Watcher wouldn't see or warn anybody that he was going to turn on the Terrigian bomb. Okay. Now, uh, why did he turn on the Dravidian bomb? Because he wanted to protect the Inhumans that wanted to leave his city from persecution from humanity. Oh, okay, right. So right. wait, now, I that. Sorry. since all of humanity is superpowered, right, and the most of humans, yeah, go ahead. don't have to worry about Galactus eating the egg, but everyone on the planet is going to fight the Celestials. To no, protect it? no, that none of that happens. In fact, that's actually why. Uatu gave Reed the ultimate nullifier to stop Galactus in the first place. The reason why Galactus or Watcher got involved is because Watchers exist in league with the Celestials. Oh, I thought the Watchers, Watchers are there the to keep an eye on, on the, the planet egg? on the egg to make sure it hatches That's for the totally Celestials. Totally not what Watchers no, are for, though. No, they're not. <laughs> but but, but no, in this but, book no, but they Kruger. Are. He, you see, he. Put in all this dense information about the hum- about the history of Marvel, so that it would. Right. You see, so he's trying to tie it all together. Yes, like and everything... by the way, it brilliantly ties all together. Like it makes sense until it doesn't. Until right. you until you think about it for a minute, and you're like, "But that's not why they did that." And it's yeah. like, "No, but that's why it does in this story." Yeah. So, uh, but then why would all the Watchers have gotten mad at Uatu for interfering when they were all supposed to be interfering? Exactly. To protect their exactly. Yeah. So it doesn't work. No, it doesn't. At all. We just what forget for that. like a half second, it's like, that's cool. That's, Whoa, wait, wait a, a minute. minute. Nope. Uh, <laughs> continuity, no. So, yeah. Yeah, so, because literally, I thought it was just like, wait. A watch was like, said a bunch of times, we were just like, ignore that shit. Yeah. No, I just gotta watch. If humanity dies and the world gets destroyed, it's fine. I know. Maybe a watch is kind of pissed. He's, he's like, kinda, you know what? These celestials suck. No, he's not. He's actually, he's, he's willing to give up everything to protect the egg right. and do what he wants with the celestials. Or do what the celestials want. So, uh, Reed actually convinces Black Bolt to kind of, like, keep the Celestials at bay. Or at least that's what everyone thinks. So the Celestials, like, or the, so Black Bolt goes, like, head on with the Celestials who are coming to hatch the end. Okay. Because that's what's really coming. Like, right. there's this stupid war on Earth for, like, the, for, like, humanity's soul. And, like, Ameri- Captain America's like, gonna Captain fight America this kid. And the kid yeah. yeah. So, uh, Black Bolt, you know, he fucking, he fucked up everything. As it turns out, uh, Doctor Strange, by the way, is not even in. Like, so uh, Reed is, actually winds yeah. up like talking to Black Bolt and like convincing him of something. We don't see, we don't hear what he says. Okay. And Black Bolt then goes up against the Celestials who are coming. Yeah. And I they're like that. at the moon. Okay. And uh, let me guess, it's because the egg is going to destroy the world. So right. So Reed like, Richards is like, look, now that everyone's an inhuman, you got to unite them so that they don't destroy Earth. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, that's right. He's gonna defend. The world because the whole, it's a whole world of inhumans. Yeah. Uh, so actually, but he, so he, he lets Black Bolt in on his plan, and Black Bolt like immediately is is annihilated by the, the Celestials because oh. they create life and worlds. Right. But Black Bolt ma- manages to get out one tremendous yell. Okay. That does nothing. Oh. But oh, but that's disappointing. It was it was all it was all a subterfuge. Oh. See, he didn't actually go there to assault the Celestials. He did that to call out a name. Okay. And the name, of course, he calls is Galactus. Now you're saying to yourself, how Galactus is he calling is Galactus? Dead. Galactus is dead. So Galactus shows up. <laughs> what? Did he conjure Galactus, Galactus into being? No. Galactus kind died. Of. Yes, he, he did. Well, Galactus. he, like, unmade Galactus. But, yeah, like, so, uh, no, he turned Galactus into a star, actually. But that does nothing to do with this Galactus that shows up. So Galactus shows up, right? And Galactus uh, fights off the Celestials. Okay. And uh, and then and then Great. they go away. <laughs> what? Well, all right. He he doesn't. They don't go. The way there's like a whole hierarchy of like what the seed within us all does. Okay. So like some of it'll turn in. Like sometimes people will turn into humans or mutants, and like some people will turn into Asgardians. But the way that you turn like if you go in if you turn into an Asgardian, you don't actually become like Thor. You become what people believe that you become. So Asgardians only exist because people believed in them once. 
And then after they like became superheroes and shit, like people still believed they existed, so they so they exist. So someone uh, called out. No, so well, no, so it's not that. So they're like Santa Claus. So they're like Santa Claus. This movie. Yes, and elf and Loki. People believe actually, in him that his magic happens. Yeah, and Loki's the only one who actually believes that story because he's the master of mischief and tricks or trickery. Okay. And so he convinces the Asgardians like, if we don't help save the world, like we are going to not exist anymore. Even though we live in like Asgard, the only reason why we live in Asgard is because people think we live in Asgard. Mm-hmm. So they go and they help, like, like it matters. Okay. So then Galactus shows up and he con- and and he is convinced by Reed Richards because like oh so so Richards says to Galactus like because you are benevolent and you are, you have a, a conscience, you will for the first time consume the egg but not destroy all life on the planet. Why? Because you have a conscience. Well, why but why but Galactus that does it. Time. Because he does it. Okay. But because this Galactus is like an Asgard. He's not, like, it's not the same deal, but, like, it's, it turns out Galactus is actually Franklin Richards. God oh. damn it. That explains why he came back. Yes. Because he's not actually even Galactus. But he doesn't know that he's not Galactus. Oh. And if he's told that he's Franklin Richards, he might stop being Galactus and then not consume the egg and save humanity. So Reed Richards has to deny his son his identity uh, okay. and make him believe he's Galactus. But he also says, like, oh, but by the way, like, Galactus is a good man who believes in preserving life, even though he's not. So he's so telling that, him who he is. Yes. He's explaining to him yeah. what he needs him to and So like, be. And maybe, like, Franklin Richards was living in the universe. Maybe he was being Galactus, or maybe he was just existing in the cosmos. And when he heard the name Galactus, it, it, was, it made him into Galactus. Whatever the case, Galactus, the Galactus we needed... I mean, maybe there was never a Galactus. Right. Maybe it was just something that we believed in. Right. No. Well, Except was, we didn't. We, he existed before we even... He he existed before we did. He was the, he wasn't no. the Galactus no, he we didn't. deserved, but he, he was, was the, the Galactus we needed. So then Reed says goodbye to Galactus, and he's like, I'm never coming back. Or whatever. Because it's sad. Because that's a sad thing for him to do. We will not meet again. Goodbye, son. And wow. you're like, well, I'll never be coming back because now I have no reason to come to your Earth. Yeah. Yeah, I, I ate, ate your thing. Yeah, I ate your thing. So then, <laughs> uh, so then like, the Watcher's like... What are you gonna do, X fifty one? You've ruined everything. What now? And then like X fifty one turns off the monitor that Watcher's been talking to him through the whole time, and then he goes and finds the Watcher's body, which is like plugged in all these machines. Oh. And then he unplugs him from all the machines, and he's like, "You'll just live on the moon in silence and in deafness and blindness." I assume you want to unplug the machines and be like, "You're just gonna die." I mean, wow, like, you assume you. he is going to die, but, like, Watcher's kind of, like, un... He actually, uh, look at that. His eyes were gouged the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, I'll be damned. So, uh, after... So, since Captain America actually won the day and murdered the Red Skull child, and also was like, I can't believe I killed another man, and it was a child! What the hell's wrong with me? And it's like, dude, what were you I'm doing? I'm just going to carve an A in my head! You already did that. <laughs> in my <laughs> scarlet letter! Yeah. For, for the Red Skull. Reed winds up working with all the superheroes and everybody like the whole new team of, of everybody okay. who's like now woken up from the Red Skull psychic control to unvert the Inhumans yes they're gonna turn those vibranium dishes that were gonna solve the energy crisis yeah. the thing that, bl- that Reed like blamed his all his failures on right into a magic cure they're, they're like they're like Olympic torches that are gonna burn the Terygian mists in the atmosphere out and he calls them human torches. <laughs> well, guess what? Just burning away the Terygian mist doesn't unmake an inhuman. Well, it does. Well, now it does. Because these aren't ordinary Terygian mist. They're yeah, Terygian bomb, bomb mists. Mist. They were released by the Terygian bomb. Yeah. So I they only make you with it. superheroes when they persist in the I hate all the, the shit atmosphere. that they're changing in here. I know. This makes me really angry. It's, it's they're not... Well, they didn't change anything. It's all... Uh, it's like, yeah, a, it's it's like what if, if they had an Elseworlds book... Like, this would be it. Yeah. It so, seems like some go. interesting things occur here. There are really great drawings that inspire some really neat ideas. But it's so... It does... It toys with continuity so much. But it's funny because it also is, like, well, dependent it re- it so much on It relies on obscure, like, details of continuity. Yeah. And also, like, tears apart other parts of continuity. Yeah. It's also pretty epic in scale. Oh, it is. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, like, the whole world, it's all of the universe. It's way more epic in scale than Kingdom Come. Than Kingdom Come. Yeah. Yes. Well, because Kingdom because Come it... is about taking hu- superhumans and making them humans. Yeah. 
And I guess so is this, but not really because we never see that. Well, DC also just doesn't have celestials. No. And Galactus. Well, they don't have an like, origin have story. The, they don't yeah. have their. Well, that's why I equate it like the, the Kingdom Come is the Bible and Earth X is the Silmarillion. Right. Like, like right. Kingdom Come is like they, these are people who live on Earth and they they live and die and they deal with humanity and, right. and God. And Earth X is like well the well in the beginning there were celestials. And the right. celestials impregnated the Earths with a celestial egg and blah blah right. blah. Like everything has a connection. Everything is in your. It's it's all wrapped up a little too tight and a little too well. It's yeah. very Tolkien esque where like everything right. has an explanation. Right. Like why is this? Oh well I'll tell you why. Right. Because Jack Kirby said this in 1967. Like. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I mean like and Jack Kirby is God, so that like, they call him the king, and yeah. yeah. So well, this is more like the Bible then. It is like, well, yeah, but it's not a Bible because like it illuminates well, God. Because in this, there's no God. Well, it's kind of like well, Scientology's Bible. <laughs> it's like a Bible of it, the religion of Marvel. Yes, if you believed, it's, if it's you the wa- Bible of the religion of crazy. If you were listening, if you were looking for a religion, this is kind of a neat one. Yeah, it's well, got space aliens. Well, and, I would love to think that. You know, there's some power in me that I could be an inhuman one day. You could all, yeah. yeah. Well, and by you believing in Asgardian gods, like, that is what makes them real. Yeah. Like yeah, Santa really or Superman that. or Mighty Mouth. Yeah. Where is Thor in this book? Is Thor he... is a chick, actually. Oh. See, that was very prescient. Yes. Uh, Loki convinces Odin to turn him into a woman because it'd be hilarious. <laughs> That's... Right, it's good <laughs> that's reason, it. I, guess. I mean, it's so crappy and flimsy. <laughs> like, why? Does he? Does she do anything in this book? Not really. She helps. Uh, she helps the dead spirit of Doctor Strange and the disembodied consciousness of the Hulk and Bruce Banner to do something. <laughs> oh, because because uh, uh, the Red Skull couldn't control the Hulk because the Hulk has no mind because the mind is in Bruce Banner. Okay. Why do yeah, Colossus runs Russia, by the way. Um, so sure. Since... Because, you know... Since the Asgardians exist because people believe that they do, and they are the way they are yeah. because of that. Yes. That means Loki is the only way that he is. Because only the way we he believe... Is because we believe that. So isn't he kind of pissed off at that? Like, yes. all of humanity made me an asshole. Yes. And made me evil. Yeah, he's actually and really interesting will, And will make me never win. Yeah. And he's not pissed off? He is pissed off. But he also is like, I also don't want to not exist. Right. So i got to help him. Yep. Why can't I just convince everyone that I'm a good guy? I don't know. And then I'll be a good guy. Because that because is then a lot. he'd be a good if he guy. If knew how to do that, he'd have done do it that. a long time yeah. ago. By the well, way, I Actually, that's mention. a catch-22. He can't do that because he's evil. That's right. Uh, there's a lot of neat ideas in here. Yeah. Uh, it by seems the way, like something I would want to read. Right? I think you. I think you might enjoy reading it. I don't know. Yeah. X fifty one. By the way, like Machine Man was created from like a two thousand one Space Odyssey comic, and so he was actually like given conscience from the monolith. And they use the monolith in this. Really? So, like, 2001 That's and the Marvel cool. Universe. Yeah. Hmm. All right. That's a fun time. Yeah. What do they See, do with it? The monolith appears before X-51 when he's Aaron Stack, and the Watcher uses it to, like, bring him to... Uh, to the moon base? To the moon, okay. yeah. And they use it uh, again for that reason as well. My favorite image in this is Reed Richards wearing the Doom. It looks <laughs> awesome, right? Like, I want... I want Alex Ross's version of that as a poster. There are, there, I mean, like, it's funny, Alex Ross, like, he drew he drew it. Like, there's a bunch of them. There's actually one where, like, he has, like, he almost has, like, a Mr. Freeze-like look where he's Doom, and he uses a gauntlet to project, like, a 3D image of Sue. That'd be a bitchin' statue. That would yeah. be really fucking cool. And Alex Ross actually drew a little PS at the end, where, like, everyone's like, woo, it worked, and then Reed just goes back to Castle Liberia and then just cries over Aww. the picture of his wife. And he's like, no matter what I do, I can't save Sue. That's rough. Because, like, because, like, when Col- when Franklin Galactus shows up, he could be like, "You're Franklin Richards, my son, and we could go back in time and save my son and save my wife and everything." And like, we don't we don't have to make the Terrigian, blah blah blah. Like, we could stop everything. Right. But like, the Celestials will still come, and I still fucked up with Galactus, and right. I don't know what else I'll do. And you well, know, I can't just go back in time and not kill Galactus I don't, because eh. because I Galactus know. will come back and eat everything. Well, yeah, Galactus does like, not he have he a consciousness. Had to, he had to kill Galactus. Well, we'll just Galactus defeat him again. The Earth. Well, yeah. With what? Like we, like we do all the time. Right. We'll just the tell someone nullifier. about the ultimate nullifier. Yeah. Like, well, okay. No, because they actually have it on the Earth, on the moon. Who has it on the moon? The Watcher. Oh. He has the ultimate nullifier? Yeah. So what was Reed Richards going to do the next time Galactus came around? He, he unmade Galactus and turned him into a star. This time, it, he knew it was his son, and he knew he was going to convince him not to do it. By the way, this is my favorite page of the oh, book. Oh, it's awesome. That's so fucking cool. Yeah, the Celestials are all, it's like, epic. getting ready, and then Galactus like, is like, nope. This is, like, the city. 
these are the Celestials, and, and then Go- Galactus shows up. And you're like, like, oh, they're fuck. about to like destroy well, the Earth. I can't believe that Galactus is bigger than they are. Well, and then later in panels, he's the same size. As well, Galactus can change his size depending on what uh, what mood he's in or where he, what he wants to do. Yeah, uh, but I think he is the, the Celestials could also be yeah. like, well, we're huge too. They are, yeah. Uh, oh, you mean like they could change their body size? Right. Yeah, probably. So there's so many questions. We should, we could we could even do another like bonus episode where we like just talk about things you see and I'll answer questions about that. Like, uh-huh. what's this? Why is Spider Man fat? You know the stuff like that. Yeah. But, like, and we'll is get there fat? one day. Yeah, he's all he looks like Uncle Ben. Oh, well, we don't got time for that shit right now. No, we don't. We got to well, wrap like, it up. Well, like he doesn't have people to save. Wrap it up. That's the thing. He lives in a world where everyone has great power. Right. So where's his responsibility? I got one question. What is the worst superhero in this book? Everyone's a superhero. Who is the worst? J. Jonah Jameson. What does he do? He's turned into a jackass. He already was that. Wait. Yeah, but now he's a like donkey a man. Donkey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Does he just bray at people? No, he talks like a really good he's person. Like tell, he's no, like I meant Mr. like, but, like oh, he gets like, upset. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's in one panel. That's I don't think you awesome. understand. That Spider-Man, Spider-Man is a menace. He's never done anything yeah. good. He just... He, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm a, sorry. I'm sorry. I, just, I got overwhelmed. No. There's a moment at the end when uh, when when Cap's like going to light the human torches and J. Jonah Jameson's like, thank you for saving my son John on the moon and whatever. And Cap's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm J. Jonah Jameson. He's like, right. <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson. And Cap just goes... <laughs> no, he just he he, he basically does. He's, right, because you're a jackass. Right, he doesn't say that. He's the reader. That's right, so right. Yeah, but I like it. Great images in this book. Yeah, but what the hell? Uh, it's insane. But That's thank insane. you so much for sharing this book with us. <laughs> and uh, and you know, I will this definitely read this. Yeah, read the hell out of it. I am not. I I. It, 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 ugh, it was a it was a it was a trial. Because I read it when I was a kid, like not a kid, but like oh, I read geez. it like I read it like ten years ago, and I was like, "Fuck this book!" Right. And now, like, and then actually recently, I was like, I was actually gonna buy it, and then he sent it to me, yeah. and I was like, "Wow, how fortuitous! This is great! I'm gonna read it again, and I'm sure it's gonna be amazing." And it, like, you know what? There's so many things in this book that are so cool and neat and awesome, but yikes! Yeah. And I not and I I you know what? Trust my gut with Universe X and Paradox X. Yeah. People like those more. Nah. Okay. I don't know. I'd love to see this drawn by Alex Ross, though. But yeah. you know what? Like, it's got this really cool, like, almost Stanley Kubrick-esque look to it. Well, I want it's to very... see anything drawn by Alex Ross. Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Here's here's Chicken Little drawn by Alex Ross. Whoa. Whoa. Those are real chickens. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, everybody, here at the special PAX East 2015 edition of Back Issues. And we'll see you guys next time with our regularly scheduled programming back on the couch. Uh, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. And we'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey, click this annotation here to see every episode that we've ever done on our channel. We'll see you guys next time.